As you watch this teaching, I want to ask you to please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in the altar of the Moscow Good News Church, where the Spirit of God moves mightily in people's lives. You know, many people don't understand that they can really have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I grew up in the denominational church, and to me, the Holy Ghost was a ghost that kind of floated in and over the congregation. You didn't know when he came. You didn't know when he went. And many charismatics kind of relate to the Holy Spirit like he's a goosebump or a chill on their skin. But my friends, the Holy Spirit is a person. And the Bible tells us in James chapter 4, verse 5, that the Holy Spirit desires to possess us and to possess us fully. He yearns for me. And the Holy Spirit yearns for you. If you surrendered to him yesterday, there's more of you that needs to be surrendered to him today. And he'll take everything you surrender because the Holy Spirit really desires to have you. And he desires to fill you completely. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust. A message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. Today I'm going to wrap up my series called The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And today I'm going to talk to you about the desire of the Holy Spirit. You say, He has a desire? He does. And today I'm going to show you what is the desire of the Holy Spirit. But hey, I'm offering you my entire series, which is called The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. It's 10 parts and it comes in multiple formats. And today is the last day that we're offering it on the program. So please, if you've been thinking about ordering this, today's your day. Order it now by going online or give us a call. And remember that you can also order the accompanying study guide. The two of these together are just so wonderful, my friends. I love my study guides because I put so much work into these study guides. These guides have all the Greek words, the points, the principles, everything in these programs so that when you hear it or see it, you can read it at the same time and really get all this revelation down deep inside you. And my friend, if you know anyone who is hungry for a deeper place, this would be a great gift to give them. This will walk them right into a partnership with the Holy Spirit. That's what their heart is crying out for. And we're also offering you right now my book by the same title, The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And again, the back of the book says, I did not write this book to be a deep scholarly work, but it's written to lead spiritually hungry people like you into a new place in God, a secret place that God has been waiting for you to find for a long, long time. And page by page, this book will walk you into a new partnership with the Holy Spirit where you and the Holy Spirit can become the dynamic duo. He wants to release his power and his presence in your life where you experience it. And that's what this book is about. And for those who become partners with our ministry, we always send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. It's small, but my friends, it is powerful. And we also send my book called Life in the Combat Zone. And I'm never prophesying a combat zone on people. People are already in combat zones. The subtitle says, How to Survive, Thrive, and Overcome in the midst of any difficult situation. And when I wrote this book, I dedicated it to our partners. So when you become a partner, we send it to you as our gift along with Denise's book. It's our way of saying, welcome to our partner family. And if you need prayer, please call us or send us your email. The moment your email shows up in our inbox or the moment the phone rings, we're gonna to begin to really release our faith with you for God to do something mighty in your life. What is it that you're believing for? Let us pray with you to send us an email or call us and immediately we're going to release our faith believing that God is going to hear and God is going to answer and respond to your need. So give us a call or send us an email. 
but reach for your Bible. And today we're going to return to where we were yesterday in James chapter four, verse four. Yesterday, we saw that we do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit. We're going to begin there again today. And then we're going to wrap it up and look at the desire of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back to James four, verse four, where James is writing to Jewish Christians. And he says, you adulterers, and adulteresses. I told you yesterday, this would have been so offensive to their ears. These were Jewish believers. Even before they came to Christ, they were moral, God-fearing people. They would have never have committed adultery. And when James calls them adulterers and adulteresses, it was like slapping them up the side of the head to get their attention. Why did he call them adulterers and adulteresses? Because they had violated their relationship with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit. They had gone outside of Christ to find fulfillment in other places. And in this verse, God says, in my view, if you've gone outside of me to find your fulfillment in other places, you have committed spiritual adultery. And that's why James calls them adulterers and adulteresses. But when you read this in the Greek text, it simply says you adulteresses because he's speaking to the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ has violated its commitment to their spouse, who is Jesus. And he says, know ye not, the Greek says, do you not comprehend? He is baffled that they do not understand what they've done. Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? That word friendship, the Greek word phileo, which describes a deep involvement or an obsession. He's really describing involvement with the world. And the word world is a form of the Greek word cosmos, which describes society, the community, things in the world, worldliness. Here they had become involved in the world, preoccupied with the world. They had shift their focus from Jesus to other things. And now they're not just doing things in the world. They're involved in the world to such an extent that James says they have committed spiritual adultery. He says, this is enmity with God. Then he adds, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. But notice he says, whosoever therefore will be. Yesterday we saw these two words, will be, are a translation of the Greek word bulomai, which means I counsel or I advise. It is the very word you would use to describe a counseling session. If you needed to be counseled, and you went to see a counselor and they counseled you, it would be this word, bulomai. But in this verse, it's not describing what another counselor says to you, but here it is a picture of what a Christian is saying to himself. He's talking himself into believing that it's all right for him to violate his relationship with Christ. It's all right if I do things that used to grieve me. It's all right if I make a little exception for myself. Little by little, talk by talk, conversation by conversation, a lot of self-talk. This person is counseling himself into believing it's okay to do things that he formerly would have believed was very, very wrong. And here's what we find. No Christian that is on fire wakes up and one day says, today's the day I'm going to backslide. No, no, no. It doesn't happen like that. It's one little exception at a time, watching something that you know you should not watch, going to a movie that you know you should not see, engaging in a conversation that you know is foul. You shouldn't be saying those things. You shouldn't be allowing that conversation to go into your ears, telling a joke that you know you should not tell, laughing at something that you know you should not find funny, but little by little, talk by talk, conversation by conversation, a lot of self-talk, that believer makes one exception and another exception and another exception and another exception until finally he's walked from where he used to be away from a red hot relationship with Jesus until he has become rather neutral, no longer on fire. He's talked himself into becoming a friend of the world. And the word friend again carries the idea of involvement, involvement, focus, preoccupation with the world. And James says, any Christian who does this is the enemy of God. Somebody once asked me, is it possible for a Christian to be the enemy of God? Well, the answer is in this verse. 
It says, whosoever therefore counsels himself, talks himself into believing that involvement with the world is okay, is the enemy of God. And the word is in Greek means constitutes himself to be. He renders himself to be the enemy of God, which means Christians who choose a worldly path set themselves in direct opposition to God. This verse says the enemy of God. The word enemy here describes a hostile position, one that God will oppose, one that God will oppose. Then when you come to James chapter 4, verse 5, we find out why this is so serious. Look at James chapter 4, verse 5. Do you think the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? It's talking about the Holy Spirit in us. And James says, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. Notice it says, the spirit that dwelleth. That word dwelleth is very important. The word in is very important. The word lusteth, very important. The word envy, very, very important. Let's look at all of these words. First of all, it says, the spirit that dwelleth. The word dwelleth is the Greek word kat oikeo, a compound of the word kata, which means down. The word okeo, which means to live or to reside. But when you compound the two words together, it depicts one settling them into a new home and making oneself to feel comfortable there, a permanent resident, which means again, your heart is not a hotel. Your heart is a home. When the Holy Spirit came to indwell you, he laid his own carpets on the floor. He hung his own pictures on the wall. He moved his big comfortable chair into your heart. He has settled down into your heart with no intention to ever leave you. He is a permanent indweller. That is why Jesus said in John 14, verse 16 and 17, he will be in you. My friends, the Holy Spirit is in you as a permanent indweller. He has made himself miraculously to be at home inside your heart. And that's why James adds the spirit that dwells in. The word in is the Greek word in, which means inside, right here, inside me, right inside you is the Holy Spirit. He has settled down inside us and made himself a permanent resident in us with no intention to ever leave us. And in us, this verse says, he lusteth to envy. Well, we usually think that the word lust is a negative word, and very often it is. But the word lust can be used in a very positive way. For example, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, this same word, in Greek it is the word epipotheo, is used to describe the lust of angels. You say, angels have lust? Absolutely, the Bible tells us. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, that angels hang low and look into our gospel meetings where the word of God is being preached, desiring, wishing that they could sit in the very chairs we sit in and receive the word of God the way that we receive the word of God, wishing they could experience the blood of Jesus like we have, wishing that they could taste the powers of God and the gifts of the Holy Spirit like we do. And in fact, James 1.12 says the angels desire the Greek word lust, the Greek word epipothe, the word pothe, means to lust, but if you attach the word epi to the front, it intensifies it. The angels are hanging low, hankering, wishing, longing, oh, wanting so much to be like us, looking into our meetings. That is amazing. So the word lust is used positively to describe the lust or the craving of angels, wishing they could sit in the chairs we sit in every week at church and receive the word of God the way that we do. That is amazing to me. It should make us appreciate church. But this word lust, the Greek word epipothe, can also be used in a negative sense to describe a man that has an addiction, a man that is so addicted to some chemical or some drug or something that his whole body is epipothe. He is bent over. He is craving it. He is yearning for it. His whole body is hankering for it. He has to have the next fix. This word epipothe, listen to this, depicts an intense desire, a craving, a hunger, an ache, a yearning, or hankering for something, a longing or pining for something, to strain after, to greatly desire, to have a strong affection, a fervent passion, or even an obsession. 
And it tells us that the Holy Spirit inside us, epipothe, longs for us. That is amazing. The Holy Spirit wants me. The Holy Spirit wants you. The Holy Spirit's waiting for his next fix. He wants more of me today than I gave him yesterday. And if I surrender more of me today, tomorrow, he's going to reveal something else in my life that he wants. He wants me. He wants all of me. He's hankering for me. He's yearning for me. The Holy Spirit wants to possess me and possess me fully. And that is what the Holy Spirit wants to do in you. The Spirit in you is yearning for you. And as you yield yourself to him, he fills you with more of himself. That is called the process of sanctification. As you yield yourself, he fills you with more of himself. But tomorrow, he's going to ask you for more. And the next day, he's going to ask you for more because the Holy Spirit in you wants you and he wants all of you. But wait, the verse goes on to say, hmm, that he lusteth to envy. What does that word envy mean? Listen, the Greek word pathonos, it describes jealousy. It depicts a hostile feeling towards someone else because of an advantage, benefit, or position that they have. A deeply felt grudge due to someone possessing what one wishes was his own. To begrudge what another person possesses. To resent another person's possession or position and to try to find a way to seize it away from that other person to make it his very own. And it even carries the idea of jealousy, ill will, or malice. And here is what this means. When we give our affection to something else rather than to the lover who is on the inside of us, my friends, the Holy Spirit is inside us. He longs for us. He's hankering for us. He's yearning for us to have us and to have us fully. He wants to fill us with his presence and sanctify us. And when we intentionally or unintentionally give our devotion to something else, the Holy Spirit swings into action like a lover who feels he has been robbed of his love. A romantic bandit has come along, and rather than just say, well, I guess I lost that relationship, the Holy Spirit swings into action in order to restore that relationship and drive the romantic bandit out of the picture. The Holy Spirit is aggressive. He is a divine lover. And when we give our devotion to something else, the Holy Spirit swings into action. A plan is set into place to regain our affection. He feels jealousy for us. He wants our relationship to be restored for our attention to be on him. This is amazing. The Holy Spirit, my friend, is not a passive partner. And this verse tells us he dwells in us He's moved into us. He is a permanent indweller. He is nestled down, settled down in his big easy chair with no intention to ever leave us. He lusts for us. He wants us. He wants all of us. He wants to fill every part of us. And if we intentionally or unintentionally violate the relationship and begin to give our affection and our devotion to something else more than him, then he will swing into action like a lover who's going to defend that relationship. You say, well, what is the plan? What does he do to restore the relationship? Well, the answer is in James chapter 4, verse 6. Listen to this. But he gives more grace. We find the grace of God swings into action to get things back in order. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but God giveth grace unto the humble. The proud in this verse is the Christian who's living wrong, behaving wrong, thinking wrong. He knows better, but he's not changing. And the Holy Spirit says, if you're not going to change on your own, then I'm going to swing into action. My grace is going to go to work on your behalf and I'm going to help you. And this verse says, God resists the believer who will not restore that relationship of his own accord. The word resist means to arrange oneself against. It literally means God will arrange himself against that erring believer. To methodic, methodically oppose, God will methodically oppose that believer. It is a strategic plan of opposition intended 
to bring a situation under control or to restore a situation. Now, somebody might say, wait, 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 wait. I thought the Bible said in Romans chapter 8, if God be for us, then no one can be against us. That's true as long as you're walking with God. But my friend, if you do wrong in your relationship with God, this verse says God will methodically oppose you. He will arrange himself against you, not to hurt you, but to wake you up so that you come back to where you need to be. That's what it says. And this is an act of God's grace. He giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God methodically stands against. He arranges himself against, intending to bring the situation back under control against the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. The word humble here would refer to that believer who says, God, I have done wrong. I am so sorry. God is attracted to a repentant heart like a magnet is attracted to metal. And when our hearts turn and we say, Lord, I've done wrong. I did not intend to grieve you. Maybe it was unintentional. Maybe you methodically, very seductively, step by step, accidentally almost talked yourself into doing things that you shouldn't do. And now you've recognized what you've done. God has done all he could to wake you up. And now you've been awakened to the fact that God's trying to bring you back home. The moment you say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm repented. Bam. Like metal is attracted to a magnet. The grace of God is attracted to you. And God gives grace to the repentant heart. And suddenly everything is restored. You don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. It just takes a change of the heart for God and you to get back in that place where you need to be. Now, the good news is the Holy Spirit's in you all the time. Maybe you've been ignoring his presence. Maybe you've grieved him. How terrible that the Holy Spirit in you has been grieved. It's time for you to say, Spirit of God, I am so sorry. If my behavior has been wrong, my thinking has been wrong, my focus has been wrong, I've ignored you, please forgive me. And the moment your heart turns, everything is put back in place. You're back on track again. You and the Holy Spirit. My friends, you can be the dynamic duo, you and the Holy Spirit, but you have to embrace the one who is in you. He is settled down inside you. He wants you. He wants all of you. So surrender yourself to him. He will fill you. And if you'll cooperate with him, he'll begin to do all his wonderful ministries in your life and work through you to change others. You and the Holy Spirit will become the dynamic duo. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. Is your heart longing to know God more intimately? Are you inwardly crying out to know more of the power of God in your life? Then the series, The Holy Spirit in You, is exactly what you need to take you into the supernatural life God wants you to experience. In this series, Rick Renner covers how the Holy Spirit is our comforter, how the Holy Spirit speaks to each of us, how to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit, how to partner with the Holy Spirit, how to see powerful and supernatural results in your life. This insightful 10-part series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $20. In addition, we are also offering you Rick's companion book, The Holy Spirit and You, working together as heaven's dynamic duo. In this book, Rick shows you how to have an intimate and powerful relationship with the Spirit of God. So if your heart is crying out to know the Holy Spirit in a deeper and more meaningful way, this book is exactly what you need to help get you moving into the supernatural life that God wants you to have right now. This essential book about knowing the joy and power of the Holy Spirit can be yours for just $17. Don't miss this special offer, the 10-part series, The Holy Spirit in You, and the companion book, The Holy Spirit in You, working together as heaven's dynamic duo. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick and Denise. We are so glad to be here. And Denise, where are we? We are at Noah's Ark. It's right there on the hill behind us. And we're here with our entire team. It is just magnificent, but we're really here because of you. 
because of your giving, we're able to come here with our whole team. And right now we're doing a series called Discovering Noah's Ark. It is a full documentary. There's a whole bunch of us here, but we're able to do it because of your giving. In fact, we're able to do everything we do because of your giving. Broadcasting, TV programs, social media, writing books, teaching the Bible, establishing churches. We're able to do all of it because of the anointing of God and the grace of God. God's given us a great team and you're part of the team. Your giving really puts fuel in the tank so we can do this. And before we went up the hill any further today, we wanted to stop and say thank you because we're very aware that we're able to do all of this because of you. And today, I just wanted to express on behalf of Denise and myself and everyone else, thank you for being such an amazing and faithful partner. Well, today we wrapped up the new series called The Holy Spirit and You, and today is the last day we're offering you the full series, 10 parts, called The Holy Spirit and You, working together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo, and it comes with the study guide. My friends, please order this today. It is the last day we're offering it on the program. You can order it right now by going online or give us a call and we'll get it right to you. And we're also offering you my book by the same title, The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. It is so easy to read. It's not a deep scholarly work, but it's a book designed to walk you into the deeper dimension with the Spirit of God. It will be life transforming if you'll buy it and read it. But you can order yours right now by going online or by giving us a call. And please remember when you reach out to us that we want to pray for you. If you have a need, let us know how to pray for you. We always do better at praying when we know how to pray. So if you tell us what you're going through, or what you're facing in your life, we will pray specifically for your need. Just give us a call or send us an email. The moment we hear from you, we're going to begin to pray for you. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we'll send you a package of books as our way of saying, welcome to the partner family. And thank you, dear friend, for helping us touch others with teaching they can trust all over the world. But Father, we thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has been sent into this world to be in us and to be alongside of us as a partner. Holy Spirit, help us to embrace you. Help us to open our ears to hear you and give us the courage to obey you. We know that you're the spirit of truth. You're always going to lead us right. And we want to develop our partnership with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you in the next program. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it.